Okay, is there anyone that's not done? That was about 10 minutes, so hopefully most people are done. Okay, so since we unfortunately weren't able to watch that um, together, I'm gonna give a really quickly, a really quick overview of what the video went over. And also for those of you who either just joined or can't access YouTube. So essentially the question of free will is a question of, are humans able, or Jackie says one more minute, please. Okay, sorry, I'll wait for one more minute then. Okay, I'm done. Awesome. Hopefully Jackie's done as well. Um, next time, I'll Cam definitely Jackie. try to... Okay, great. Yeah, next time I'll definitely try to figure out what's wrong with this. But as I was saying, I'm going to give a quick summary of the video. The central question of free will is, are humans able to have free will? Um, for example, let's say that one day I wanted to get a cup of coffee and I went to Starbucks and I bought a cup of coffee. Did I do that out of my own free will? Libertarian people that support libertarian free will would say yes, because while well, you wanted to get the coffee, you could have not gotten the coffee, and yet you decided to get the coffee. And so you did it out of your free will. That's one side of the argument. But on the other side, people could argue, you only got a coffee because, um, because you were thirsty, or you were hungry, or you saw Starbucks sign and you were attracted to it. In that case, would that really be free will? Because you didn't really have another choice. How would you know that you had another choice if you never made that other choice? So these are essentially the two main sides of the debate, libertarian free will and hard determinism. The third main side of the debate is compatibilism. And compatibilism is a bit confusing. To give a quick summary of it, of it, it wasn't went over in the video, but essentially it says that it's possible to have both libertarian free will and determinism. That's a bit confusing, and we won't cover this in the lesson today either. Before we move on, does anyone have any questions about metaphysics or the free will debate or the video? Okay. So we're actually going to have the discussion about free will at the end before... First, I'm going to go over several, I guess, interesting things in the debate about free will. So as I mentioned in the beginning of our meeting today, there's a very, very rich history, both in science and in, well, history, about free will. Um, this is a very well-researched and well-thought topic. So I'm going to go over four very interesting facts about this and ask you guys if that changes your opinion. The first is Clarence Darrow's trial defense. Um, and if Clarence Darrow's name sounds familiar to you, that's because he was the lawyer in the Scopes Monkey trial. So you might have learned about that in school. But the other famous trial he was involved in is the murder trial for Richard Loeb and Nathan Leopold. These two Chicago teenagers kidnapped and murdered a boy named Bobby Franks for seemingly no reason. In court, Darrow, who was their defense attorney, argued that they had been influenced by their upbringing and family backgrounds to commit the murder. They showed a lack of emotions and had no other choice. 
and I think they took like a psychiatric test and found that they showed a lack of emotions. In other words, Darrow argued that they were predetermined to do the murder. And um, surprisingly enough, Clarence Darrow's argument actually successfully helped the two Chicago teenagers avoid the death penalty. So the judge ruled instead for a life sentence, which is most considered a lesser punishment. The reason that this case is important and significant is because this was one of the first times that determinism was seriously used in an argument in the public. And especially since this is such a high profile court case. What is everyone's thoughts on this? Did you think um, Darrow's argument made sense? And did you think the judge's decision was correct? Okay, so for the two of you who said no, do you want to explain in the voice channel? Okay, you can explain in the chat too, I guess. Well, I guess that they can't just do it. Why would someone just have no emotions? That doesn't make sense. Something would have motivated them to do it out of, well, free will because they can decide what they do. But then it's probably not caused by something if he said that, um, that they had nothing to do with it. Well, his argument wasn't that they had nothing to do with it. Um, his argument was that they did it, they know they did it, and they did it for reasons outside of their control. Um, did someone say something? Okay. Well, um, Darrow argued that uh, Loeb's and Leopold's parents were, I think, they were absent most of the time, so most of the time they spent by themselves. Um, they didn't really get the moral upbringing that most kids got, uh, most, most kids get. So Dara argued that because they really only had themselves, they never really learned that this kind of thing was so wrong. So they didn't know better, essentially. And like, well, so why don't they, suffering, they well, what the proof thing. does he has, have that they didn't know better? Well, he argues that, first of all, when they took a psychiatric test, they found that um, the teens had a notable lack of human empathy or emotion. What if they um, were lying when they took the test? Yeah, what if they were lying? What if they were doing it on purpose? Yeah, does he have a lie detector? Well, I guess- I mean, possible. even if he had a lie detector, they probably paid him a lot of money to buy fake ones. You can't just say someone, some, someone killed someone because they wanted to out of no reason at all. Oh, so I- so like someone's like, oh, I killed this person, and yeah, my parents were usually absent. Okay, so no death penalty for you, like seriously. Lie detectors aren't that effective. Okay, so my question for all of you is, what about this? What if instead of having absent parents in this case, what if instead they had parents that motivated them to kill people, and they said that it's okay to kill other people, and then they didn't come into contact with society, so they didn't know that it was wrong, and then they killed a person. Is that situation different? Would Darrow's argument that they had no other choice make more sense in that case? They didn't have no other choice. Even if their parents, in a hypothetical situation, if their parents said that, if their parents like raised them up to be, and repeatedly told them that it's okay to murder someone. They could have. They could have learned it. They could have, but would it have been reasonable to ask them to do that? And also, how do we? How do you know that they could have learned it? Even if they asked them to, even if their parents told them to do it, it's technically still their choice, and they could have not took killing that boy. And plus, no one can prove that they were not lying on the test. First of all, isn't a death penalty worse than a life sentence? No, isn't a death penalty better than a life sentence? I guess. It probably is a lot better. Well, Instead of, you're well, probably going to go insane in jail. I agree, I agree. You're probably going to go insane in jail. 
Also, uh, death penalty is uh, obviously uh, the smart uh, decision because you yeah. first of all, it's cost a lot less. And okay, also, well, it causes let's a lot less. That. Let's, we can ignore the fact that they avoided the death penalty. Let's just assume that they got a lesser punishment because that's a debate in itself. I mean, yes. They kind of, if their parents are abusive, they do get kind of like a free pass. That was Daryl's argument. Yeah, yeah Anonymous Penny, go ahead. Okay, no, so, like, I kind of agree with the person who posted in the chat. So, so Hitler, like, okay, so, can you, pr well, can you prove that their parents were doing that to them? Well, like, well, then technically, why, why was hit? Why did they try to kill Hitler then? Well, like, why don't, what, what if they have, I don't know, like, that, what if Hitler just hired some law and was like, well, actually, my parents were telling me to do Excuse me, Hitler but, killing millions of people is different than these two random kids who probably don't even know what they're doing, killing a single child. They don't they're know what they're doing. Oops. Oh, I stabbed him. Oh, no, I don't, I didn't know what I was doing. <laughs> oh, you didn't know that? Okay, you can avoid jail. Bye, have a nice day. They didn't avoid jail. They still got a punishment. Oh, and what was that? They got life sentence. Boy. Well, I, I actually think that the life sentence is probably worse than the exactly. Because then you're just not being a human. It's not, you're not That's being human. Mean. All you do is eat and sleep and do nothing. That's not true. I mean, would you rather do that for 80 years? Like, no, well, actually, I'm pretty sure that a life sentence is matter. not, like, actually your entire life. I'm pretty sure that, I think, one of these, yeah, Most one of these the people died in prison, years. but the other person eventually got out and, I think, tried to rebuild his life. Yeah, because it's 50 years. It's not an entire life. But, I mean, it is kind of crazy you will why go and say why is it called life sentence why is it why is it because like you're in there for a, it's it because you're in there for a majority of your life. life yeah it's most of your then life why, then why is it called majority of life sentence then because that's the shitty know. name i don't know why but oh my. It's just how it is don't question it no but then they shouldn't have it because then that just basically ruins your life if you have a life sentence that just means that you're going to spend the life in a meaningless prison and eat and drink and do nothing well, what is, the is that a life sentence is around 10 times cheaper than a not life sentence a death What's sentence the point of calling it a life sentence if it isn't a life sentence? okay that's, that's not that's what matters we're not discussion. the government we don't get to decide it's irrelevant to the discussion yes but the fact is it's cheaper and it's also a better punishment for those people because making them die doesn't really help wait how is it cheaper yeah, okay, well, that's, that's okay. also, that's I'm also not going to explain point. that. You can go research on that. I know it's you not. Don't, don't question it. It's, you need more experts for court. Water. You need a lot more things. Actually, the U.S. spends about one hundred thousand dollars on a prisoner each year, so a life sentence would cause way, cost way more than this. It cost at least they if cost four times them, more. Of okay, guys, guys, guys this, is not, like this is not this is not so relevant to our discussion. So we're gonna we're gonna move back on to the discussion. Um. But mm -hmm. I haven't been chat. So someone says, so someone mentioned Hitler and so asked if why Hitler wouldn't be punished in the same way. I guess that's a good point. Maybe maybe the difference is, well, one obvious difference is Hitler killed like a lot more people. That's yes, like a lot worse. And he obviously knew what he was doing. Yeah, I guess the second thing is and that he didn't Hitler have bad parents. How do you know Whereas, he, he was doing what he was doing? How would you do mass genocide? Without okay, murdering. honestly, I just I completely think that Hitler deserved it, honestly. But like, just saying, if you think, but like, do you have any proof that technically he knew he was doing? That's not what matters. It doesn't matter. They still got a punishment. It was You're acting like idea. they didn't get. It was actually a good idea to kill Hitler because he already killed millions of lives. Well, at least it was a good idea to other people. Well, the boys, they have killed people, but it was influenced by family. But the girls kill have killed people. He killed like, himself. Depends on the judges, what the judges think about the murder. Wait, what'd you say? The last part? But 
but the boys, they have killed people, so it depends on the judges what they think about the murder and their points. Mm, okay. Okay. But how do you know that if, like, you did a, if you did a life sentence and then you let them go, how do you know they won't grow up to be someone like him? It doesn't matter. First of all, a life sentence costs... 10 times less than a death penalty. So we're not going to talk about what happens after. We're going to talk about what's happening when they got jailed. Should they have gotten a death penalty? Like just for example, what what he's trying to say is death penalty, let's just imagine it's worse in every way, even though it really isn't. But let's just imagine it's worse in every way and life sentence is better in a couple aspects. Pretty much. Research it if you want to know, okay? Okay, wait, Maris, did you have to say that? Research, it costs $100,000 in a prisoner in a prison in the U.S. Therefore, 50 years would be $5 million. Yo, off topic. Saying that Yo, dude. Okay, wait, wait. <laughs> let's, let's, let's go one by one. Um, please don't talk over each other. I think Maris um, says something first. Okay, just a, a sentence, okay? What's the most hard, the hardest, the punish for the people? A million dollars or your life? If Hitler, uh, if Hitler alive today, what what will we do? Uh, what will we do to him? Kill him or <coughs> or um, probably still kill him. him? Kill him? But he killed a million of lives. Didn't think that kill him is easy to him. It's the most simplest way to to save him, exactly. What's the most... Oh, that's, okay. I see your point. But that's not really relevant to what we're discussing right now. Yes. We're mostly still talking about free will. Um, we could have that discussion another day. But I, I see your point. Penny? Anonymous Penny? I honestly don't agree. I completely disagree with what Hitler did and everything. But still, if this, if this case, they just life sentence and then they were let go or something. Like, okay, so how do you know? How do, first of all, how do they know they won't grow up to murder a lot more people? That's Instead the whole of, point of a punishment. What, just a, pu- a punishment? Okay, so like you get punished and you'll just like, so, you're like, oh my God, I got punished. Okay, I will you never should do this things. again. You should really research things. They won't let you out if you have stuff. It, yeah, you trust the internet so much, do you? There's a thing called no, a there's something board. called papers. It's kind of effective. Okay, okay. Um, this discussion has ascended into animals. I know. I don't know <laughs> the discussion has gotten a bit messy. So we're going to move on. Um. I only intended this to be a short discussion because there's still three more. Yeah, it sounds like an argument. It is an argument. Isn't that the whole point? I mean, it is an argument. Yeah, that is the whole point. It's a respectful it's argument. It's a debate. It's a respectfully argument. Cough, cough. No, it's an idea. It's an idea sharing. Well, it's it's supposed to be more like a discussion, but there's, it's a, it's like a gray area between that. Anyway, moving on to the second interesting point, and this one is completely unrelated to the first. So stop yes. talking about the death penalty and stuff like that. Yes, and this is Jose no. Delgado's experiments on the brain. So Delgado, a Yale University scientist, discovered that stimulating various regions of the brain can cause all sorts of bodily motions, like frowning, opening and closing eyes, and moving head, arms, legs, and fingers. When he first tried this using cats and monkeys, Delgado noticed that the animals showed no surprise or fear when their bodies moved. Apparently, they experienced the movements as voluntary. In one instance, stimulating a monkey's brain caused the monkey um, to get up and walk around. The effect was repeated several times, and each time the animal strolled around without surprise or discomfort, as if it had just decided to take a walk. So the question is, if it's so easy to, st- to just manipulate an animal to do something, then how do we know that humans aren't manipulated similarly? Maybe so we we're in the matrix again. Well, no, 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 no. That, that's, not, that's not what I meant. I mean, maybe we don't have an electric signal in our brain but maybe we're manipulated by like certain outside stimuli that causes some neurons to fire that causes us to do something that we think we're doing voluntarily when in reality we did it solely in response to the situation. I mean, this is a topic that kids that are under the age of 17 don't even know. 
Are you under the age of 17? Definitely, and I don't even know that.